My guest says Jesus is the original time traveler. Time travel is real, and he has proof. Next. I'm here with Troy Brewer. And, uh, Troy, uh, you get into controversial teaching. <laughs> God gets you in trouble all the time, doesn't he? He does. Yes, sir, he does. Okay. You say time travel was created by God, and there, there's a background from the Bible that most people have missed. Explain that. Well, yes, sir, said God is not Father Time. Right? He's, he's actually Father God, and God did indeed create the entire material universe with time, space, and matter together. So you can actually find that in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, time, God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. Thousands of years before the rest of the world discovered it, it was right there in the Bible the entire time. And so whenever the Lord created time, He created it in such a way to where things have beginning and things have ending. And He does that for a very, very, very specific reason. And it's super important that we understand it. Um, why is that important we understand it? The Messiah Himself is the Redeemer. And whenever He redeems, He changes a curse into a blessing dead things into live things, things where there was shame into things that were honored, right? And that entire process of this exchange is actually called redemption. And so how heaven invades earth in that exchange where the, where the blood of the lamb comes in and says, I'm going to exchange that, that's what he's talking about whenever it comes to redemption. Okay. So he's in process of redeeming everything. Yes, he is. What has this got to do with time? Before I tell you that, can I just tell you, you know that we can invite the manifest presence of God here, right? I mean, we know of we course. can. And we, you and I, we love the glory of God, His visible awesomeness, His weightiness, His tangible presence. I also know that I can invite you know, the Lord. I can say, Lord, I ask you, sir, to be made manifest, say, in Uganda. I show up at my friend's prayer meeting and do that. Well, that's, a, that's an understanding of space. And I know that if time, if, if time and space and matter are in perfect continuum, and they are, then I know that if I can do that, I can also invite him into here or there or wherever to be made manifest. But it also means that I'm not subject to a timeline to invite the presence of the Lord in. What I mean by that is I'm in this place right now. I can't go back through time. You can't go back through time. But I know somebody who can. And he can literally step into a time frame right now, or he can step in, we can invite him into a time frame of back then or even into our future. Whereas Jesus told Brother Peter, I've seen the day that you die, and it glorifies me. Once this key is understood, you see it throughout the Bible. You, don't it's you? all the way there. It's there all the way through. Even the psalmist said in Psalms 139, verse 5, and I love the Passion Translation of this. It says this, you go into my future to prepare the way. And then in kindness, you go behind me. And then it says to spare me from the harm of my past. Oh, my goodness. When I first saw that, said, I was like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And it's actually been in the Bible the whole time. And I was like, wow. So God is not subject to time in any way whatsoever. He's not shackled to it. And God created time for the purposes of, of redemption. As soon as you find out exactly where the timeline begins and exactly where the timeline ends, biblically, you begin to understand that. So whenever he created this timeline, what happened was as soon as, as, soon as Adam sinned, he falls into time, and the Lord says, okay, your clock is now ticking. Okay, he, uh, the Bible says, a day is to the Lord a thousand years, and Adam died on the first day, which is 930 years later. Now, why would he have to enter into that? Because, because Sid, time is the only place that you can say, that was then, this is now, and this is the promise of how it's going to be. Now, in the whole eternal realm, how you enter into it is how you've always been. And that's why it's so important for us to enter in saved, full of the Holy Spirit, holy, redeemed, right? Because once you enter in, that's the way that you're always going to be. But in time, it's not so. Actually, through a very relational process, the Father comes to us and begins to line up on line, precept upon precept, from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from everlasting unto everlasting, from deep unto deep. He begins to reveal one layer of another layer of another layer of His redemptive plan towards us until we finally get to the Messiah. And then from there, He builds an amazing relationship with us 
this and says, now, for every place in your life that looks like hell, I want it to look like heaven. That can only happen within, within an, an actual timeline. You teach, you can redeem the timeline yeah. from things in the past, yes. like hurts, like um, uh, traumas from the past. Yes. Explain how you can do that. Well, I have just in partnering with the Lord, I know, Sid, that if I seek the Lord, I will find him. That if I ask, I know he will answer. I know that if I knock, I know he is so faithful to open up that door. I know that. But that's not just for my now, because see, he's not subject to time. I am. So if I find a place in my past, or if I'm scared of something within my future, I can't go back to that place and I can't, I can't hurry up and get into that other place, but the Lord can step into that place right now. Even if it's past for me, it matters nothing to Him. I mean, time is time to Him, and He, and t- he is not subject to time. Time is subject to Him. Troy has proof that Jesus is the original time traveler <laughs> when we return. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. You know, try this redeeming the timeline. You have some amazing, I mean, when I say amazing, I mean amazing stories of praying with people, which is all can be done uh, just through your CDs and, and your, your brand new book uh, of redeeming your timeline. Tell me that, but this takes the cake, the red ring story. So one year when I was a very young man, I had two separate friends that their parents were killed in private plane crashes. And one of those girls I didn't see for years and years and years, and I finally ran into her just a few years ago. And we, we discussed her life, we discussed what had happened from the time that her parents were killed in this tragic, terrible event, how it had spun her off. She hadn't been able to have good relationships. She didn't get along well with her brothers and sisters. Uh, she didn't get along with, well with her children. And so I asked her, I said, did you, have you ever asked the Lord into your life? And she said, yes. And I said, well, have you asked God into your life back then? She goes, how can I possibly do that? So I just walked her through and I said, you know, what is the worst part of the whole plane crash that, um, for you? And she just simply said, the fact that it must have been so, so scary and terrifying. I'm like, well, let's invite the Lord. Let's ask Jesus if he'll actually be in that airplane while that airplane is going down. And she said, we can do that? I said, yeah, he's not subject to time. Let's ask him. So we prayed this strange prayer and we invited the Lord into the actual cabin of that airplane to be made manifest. And while we were praying that prayer, the Lord responded and I saw in my spirit, I heard him say to his wife, God is with us, God is with us. And I saw him put his arms around his wife. And I saw that on his hand, he had this giant red ring. And so I told her this story and she said, well, my dad was actually wearing a big giant red ring whenever the plane crashed. And she said, we never found it. I, I don't know where it went, but she said, that's remarkable. I said, well, you know what? We invited the Lord there and God showed up and I heard him say, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. Well, after that, she got reunited with her brother. And instantly her relationship started changing. Instantly God began to do miracles within her life. And her brother said, I think that we should go together out to the plane crash together, to the actual site. Never been out there more than, more than 30 years. They went out there together. They walked up to the crash site and right there, 30 years later was that giant red ring sitting right on top of the ground. It was a prophetic marker. How many years later? 32, I believe. Wow. How did it affect her? It changed her life. She knew now I, my parents were not alone. The Lord was with them. And she knew also I had the power. I actually had the power in this day to invite the Lord into that place because God is not subject to time. And then you know what? Her marriage was made new. Her relationship with her children was made new. Why? Because the curse from that flow of time had now been redeemed. And now she's walking in a blessing instead of a curse. There's so many people watching us right now that have shame. Mm. Shame 
maybe for something you've never done, something that was done to you, or shame for something you did do, and now you're a believer, and, 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 and you, you just can't forgive yourself over it. Can you tell me maybe uh, someone that you prayed with or you heard about that was dealing with shame and guilt? Um, yeah, we had a guy that actually got out of prison after 21 years in prison, and he came to our church, and after a year he could not find a job. He, he was scary looking. He had tattoos all over him, you know. Oh, the prison record. Yes, and he had this terrible prison record, and he could not find a job. And one day we were praying with him and talking to him, and all of a sudden it occurred to me, oh, you know what, he's, because of his prison record, he needs redemption because I don't know how God can do such a thing, but I know that He can, because He cannot have a normal life anymore because of something that happened, you know, decades ago. So I asked him about the day that he was sentenced, and he set the whole thing up. He said, oh, Troy, it was the worst day. It was so bad. I knew as soon as, he, as, as, soon as the judge hit the gavel, I knew that all I could do was hold my head in shame. My kids were not going to know me. My wife was going to leave me. It was horrible. And so we invited King Jesus to step into that time frame and to be made manifest. We ask the glory of the Lord to cause all of His goodness to pass before Him in that place. And He did. The very next day, that was on a Sunday night, on Monday morning He woke up with an idea of a place to put in an application. He had to walk a long ways. And to make a very long story short, he, they went to hire him immediately because he's a welder and then found out he was a felon and they said, no, we can't. But they went ahead and ran the make on him, mm -hmm. said they could not find a record in the state of Texas saying that that man had been in prison for uh, 21 years. How is that possible? It disappeared. And then and the man told him, no, I, I promise I have been in prison. They ran it there again and said, well, there's no record. He said, no, I, I mean, there is. You're just not looking right. This is my name. They ran it through three times, and then they finally said, well, we've done our due diligence. We're going to hire you. He said, that job was not a, a menial job. It was a job making more than $50 an, $50 an hour. It was exceedingly abundantly above all that he could ask or think. I, I bet he, he <laughs> just couldn't believe that. And he came to the church. He told us, uh, we got him up in front of everybody. He told us, he's like, our Redeemer is real. Our Redeemer is real. Yeah. It's amazing. So he can't change the past, but he can change the way it affected That's you. That's exactly right. And, and the devil temper, tampered with you the rest of your life over it. That's correct. Yes, sir. So I had a... I want to tell you how all this started for me. Is that okay? Please. So um, I used to play in this evangelical band, and we were all Christians, and we loved the Lord, and I was a kid, and we played secular venues all over the United States. And I was in Austin, Texas at the Liberty Lunch, and this is, in, this is on World Famous 6th Street, and I was like a teenager or in my early 20s. I looked, and on the wall while I was playing guitar, I saw this sign that said, Time is God's way of keeping everything from happening at once. The Spirit of the Lord caused that to jump into my mind and into my heart and from my spirit, and I couldn't get I was like, why doesn't God want everything to happen at once? What is that? And I began to seek the Lord. Furthermore, from there, after some time of just trying to walk this out and trying to understand, I was seated in my pickup truck in my hometown of Joshua, Texas, watching this endless train go by. And I was, I was complaining to the Lord about it, Sid, going, man, this train's so long. I've been there, I know you, about it. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I couldn't see the, the engine, I couldn't even see the caboose, I was just looking at one car at a time, and all of a sudden, the glory of God filled up the truck of my cab, and I had an open vision. I wasn't even expecting this to happen. The Spirit of the Lord arrested me. And all of a sudden, I could see that I was a thousand feet above this train looking down. And I could see my truck, I could see the train, and I got this revelation because I could see the beginning, the engine, I could see the end, the caboose, and I could see every car in between, and I instantly knew the Spirit of the Lord gave me a revelation. He said, Troy, this is how I view your timeline. This is how I view the timeline of all humanity. Okay, while you can only see one car at a time, God Almighty can see David slaying Goliath at the same exact time Abraham's going into covenant with God, at the same exact time Messiah is being raised from the dead, at the same exact time of the martyrs within, within the dark ages, and the same time that we're here right now at this moment. He sees it all at the same time, and He can step in and out of that as He pleases. As soon as I 
as this encounter was over, I went, this is a game changer. Because if it comes to my timeline, the first day I was born, and then the last day that, that I breathe upon this earth, the Lord knows all my days right now. And it means I don't have to be subject to the times of my past. I can invite Him into those things. And He changes that for me. I no longer am just receiving death. Unredeemed time, we are losing everything. But in redeemed time, we are gaining everything. That's why Brother Paul said, for me to die is gain. He's experienced redemption within, within his time frame. Do you want Jesus to redeem your past as well as supernaturally change your future? The how-to. And Troy will pray for you next. We now return to It's Supernatural! Troy, how do we walk in the full benefits of this marvelous gift of redemption? Well, I have several premises, and if we can get this, and we can actually walk in this in a powerful way. The first one is just to come to the realization that God is not subject to time or shackled to it in any way whatsoever. The second one is to understand that God Almighty created time for the purposes of redemption. The third one simply says redemption changes everything. And then the fourth one simply says, God has made me a steward of my timeline and I can actually partner with him in any single part of it. And he wants me to invite him in. So God's not subject to time. He made it for redemption. Redemption changes everything. And God has given us an open invitation to invite him into every single part of our life. And when His presence shows up... Changes everything. It's, it's the most marvelous thing. <laughs> uh, so, Troy, how does this affect, or what does it mean for our present and our future? So, if the Lord steps up in my past, if I invite Him to step onto my train of a timeline right now, let's just say something happened to me when I was, I don't know, I'm just going to make something up. I'm just going to say 10 years old. But once I find the presence of the Lord there, His manifest presence overwhelms me instead of the traumatic event. And, and it th probably pushes that traumatic it, event out. That's exactly right. So what that means is I can immediately begin to see the results in my now. Things that have been cursed and set up from that thing can no longer be there, and those things begin to just fall to pieces. It also means this, I mean, you know that if we invite the presence of the Lord into our life right now, it absolutely changes our future, correct? Right. Okay, well, we'll just imagine this. If we right now invite the Lord into our future, it also changes our right now. He says He sees the end from the beginning, okay? So it gives us a different landing place. Like, I am so not worried about the day that I die. I'm so not worried because I've already asked the Lord to be with me on that day. I've asked Him, God, make my last day my best day. I wanna know your presence. And so what that does is it takes out any fear that I have right now as I step into that place. You, know, you mean the people watching us right now that have a fear of death and they know they're born again, they know they'll go to heaven, but that, all those fears can be can blasted out remember. from past, present, and future. Yes. Such a deal. Yes. <laughs> you know this. I know this. But I don't know if you know this. This is eternal life. In Greek it says, in the Weiss translation, Jesus said that you might have experiential knowledge of me. You have the head knowledge, you said the prayer, but you don't have the experiential knowledge. Or perhaps you don't even have the head knowledge. But this Jesus we've been talking about, that wants to redeem every bad thing in your past, get rid of the curse, and allow you from this point in your life to walk in a life flowing with the blessings of God rather than the curses and the tragedies of the past. Say this prayer with me and believe it to the best of your ability. Out loud, dear God, dear God I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I believe 
the blood of Jesus washed away every sin. And I am clean. And now that I am clean, I ask you, Jesus Messiah, to come and live inside of me. I make you not just my Savior, but my Savior and Lord. Amen. Troy, I would like you to pray whatever God is showing you to pray right now for people. Pray that they get some healing in the areas of their life, their families, their health, their finances, their anger, their hurts, their mistrust. Pray for them. Friends, Jesus is the answer and he loves you so much. And you know, if you can, if you can invite him into every single part of your day, you can invite him into every single part of your life, past, present, and future. I'm going to pray for you and I want you to receive this. Father God, sir, I want to lift up every single person, God, that is watching right now all over the world. And God, I lift up their timelines. I ask you, God, to mark their days. God, I know, sir, that they're numbered. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, sir, for the faith, Lord God, for the God-given ability, for the grace, for the supernatural presence of the manifest presence of Jesus to enter into every single life in such a way, God, that you cannot be ignored, you cannot be denied. Let the Spirit of the living God move forward. I pray, God, that you would heal our histories. I pray, God, that you would remove the fear of our futures. And I pray, God, that your God, that your presence and your peace would be with us in our right now. King Jesus, sir, manifest your heart towards every single person that is saying yes and bring healing in Jesus name. Amen. Call now and get Troy Brewer's powerful brand new book, Redeeming Your Timeline. You will also receive his two-part DVD set, Supernatural Keys to Redeeming Your Timeline, and his exclusive audio CD teaching, Five Gifts from Jesus, plus this bonus declaration card, Redeeming Your Timeline. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9718. Through Troy Brewer's powerful brand new book, you will learn how you can invite Jesus into your personal timeline to supernaturally redeem your past and miraculously prepare your future. The book includes prayers and exercises to help you redeem your times of loss into gain, failure into success, and more. You will also receive his two-part DVD set, Supernatural Keys to Redeeming Your Timeline. You will get to know Jesus as the creator of time, space, and matter. Change your present, future, and the destiny of your generation. Gain supernatural skill sets for healing healing past wounds, calming future anxieties, and discovering rest in the now. Plus, you will receive Troy Brewer's audio CD teaching, Five Gifts from Jesus. Troy provides a vivid account of his 93-minute encounter with Jesus, the specific five gifts he received, including their purpose and application. Troy prays for an impartation of these gifts and walks you through specific prayers to receive each one of them. Plus, you will receive this bonus declaration card. This handy card includes powerful prayers, declarations, and scriptures for redeeming your time. Don't miss out on getting Troy Brewer's powerful brand new book, Redeeming Your Timeline. You will also receive his two-part DVD set, Supernatural Keys to Redeeming Your Timeline, and his exclusive audio CD teaching, Five Gifts from Jesus, plus this bonus declaration card, Redeeming Your Timeline. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9718. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9718 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.